In October 2025, Beijing sent shockwaves through the global tech industry. The world watched as China, long known as the dominant force in rare earth production, made a move that would reshape the future of technology and international trade. China's Ministry of Commerce announced sweeping new export restrictions on rare earth materials, 17 elements essential to modern technology. These minerals are the backbone of everything from smartphones and electric vehicles to advanced military hardware and renewable energy systems. Any company anywhere now needed explicit Chinese approval to export products containing even trace amounts of Chinese processed rare earths. This unprecedented policy sent a clear signal China was ready to leverage its control over these critical resources. This was a direct challenge to global supply chains extending China's regulatory reach far beyond its borders. Suddenly the world's manufacturers and tech giants faced a new reality, one where access to vital materials could be cut off overnight. If a chip was made in Taiwan or a magnet in Japan using Chinese rare earths, it now fell under Beijing's control. Even products assembled thousands of miles away were no longer immune to China's influence. The move was a calculated response to years of US-led efforts to restrict China's access to advanced technology. Tensions between the world's two largest economies had been simmering, and now, China was striking back where it hurt most. By weaponizing its near monopoly on rare earth processing, China made its message clear. Restrict our tech, and we'll restrict your materials. The balance of power in the tech world was shifting, and everyone felt the tremors. The era of frictionless globalization in tech was over. For decades companies had relied on seamless international cooperation but now, uncertainty and risk had become the new normal. Companies worldwide suddenly realized their entire production lines could be halted by a single decision in Beijing. Boardrooms buzzed with urgent meetings as executives scrambled to assess their vulnerabilities and find alternatives. The global tech war had entered a dangerous new phase, with the world's most advanced industries now caught in the crossfire of a high-stakes geopolitical standoff. Rare earths are the hidden backbone of advanced technology, and China controls over 90% of their refined supply. No company felt this more than ASML, the Dutch firm making the world's only extreme ultraviolet lithography machines, vital for cutting-edge chips. ASML's machines rely on ultra-pure cerium oxide and rare earth magnets, both sourced almost exclusively from China. With only limited stockpiles, ASML faced an existential threat. A Chinese export denial could halt its production within months. This would choke the entire global semiconductor ecosystem, revealing just how fragile the world's most sophisticated manufacturing tools really are. Geopolitical tensions now threaten to grind technological progress to a halt. An ASML shutdown would trigger a catastrophic domino effect across global tech. Chipmakers like TSMC, Samsung and Intel depend on ASML's machines. Without them, advanced chip production would stall. This would hit Apple, Nvidia and Qualcomm, delaying products, stalling AI development and threatening 5G rollouts. The entire tech supply chain, once seen as efficient, was exposed as dangerously fragile. China's control over rare earths gave it the power to choke innovation at its source. By squeezing ASML, Beijing could hold the multi-trillion dollar tech industry hostage. This was no longer just business competition, it was about controlling the building blocks of the digital age. October 2025 made it clear, tech power now meant controlling the raw materials. China's rare earth restrictions were a calculated counterpunch in a long tech war. The US and allies had tried to slow China's rise by blocking access to advanced chips and equipment. By pressuring the Netherlands to block ASML sales and restricting NVIDIA's AI chips, Washington aimed a bottleneck China's tech sector, but the West overlooked its own vulnerability, China's near monopoly on rare earths. Beijing's move was asymmetric warfare, striking at the weakest link in the Western supply chain. By mirroring US tactics, China showed that dependencies run both ways. The message, decouple from us, and we'll do the same to you. The tech war was now a two-sided affair, with China wielding powerful leverage. The balance of power had fundamentally shifted. The global fallout from the escalating trade war forced both Washington and Beijing to the negotiating table, as mounting economic pressure and market instability became impossible to ignore. The world watched anxiously, knowing that the outcome would shape the future of global commerce and technology. In late October 2025, after weeks of tense back-channel discussions, 
a temporary truce was struck, China agreed to suspend its harshest export controls, while the U.S. eased some of its most restrictive tech sanctions. The agreement was met with cautious optimism, but also skepticism about its durability. The deal was more of a ceasefire than a true resolution. China's export licensing system, though relaxed for now, remained fully operational and could be reactivated at any moment, keeping global supply chains on edge. The threat of renewed restrictions still loomed large over the tech industry, leaving executives and investors wary of making long-term commitments. As part of the deal, NVIDIA was allowed to resume some chip sales to China, but only after agreeing to pay a hefty national security fee to the U.S. government, a new cost of doing business in a fractured world. This new model allowed the U.S. to profit from, rather than outright block, certain tech exports. It was a pragmatic shift, turning restrictions into revenue, but it did little to address the underlying strategic rivalry. Meanwhile, European allies felt increasingly uneasy, fearing their interests were being sidelined in a world where the U.S. and China called the shots, many worried about being caught in the crossfire of future disputes. Companies like ASML, critical to the global chip supply chain, got a temporary reprieve. But the core vulnerability, the world's reliance on a handful of suppliers, remained unresolved. The world's dependence on China, for critical materials, from rare earths to advanced components, was unchanged. Any disruption could still send shockwaves through entire industries. The truce was a patch, not a fix. Everyone knew that the next crisis was only a matter of time, and that the underlying issues had not been addressed. The underlying tensions had merely been paused, not resolved. The world held its breath, waiting to see what would happen when the fragile peace inevitably came under strain once again. The 20,000 styles thing. 25 crisis forced the West to confront its rare earth dependency. Diversifying away from China became urgent national security policy. Rebuilding rare earth supply chains is a monumental decades-long task. Mines, refineries, and expertise must all be recreated. The US and Europe launched new initiatives and funded domestic projects, but China's scale and cost advantage remain overwhelming. Private companies are investing in cleaner, more efficient processing, but results will take years. China's mastery of rare earth chemistry is unmatched, and its infrastructure dwarfs Western efforts. For now, the West is racing to catch up with a massive head start. The crisis made diversification essential, but also revealed how slow and costly it will be. China's grip on critical materials remains firm for the foreseeable future. As the West scrambled, China doubled down on technological self-reliance. U.S. sanctions only accelerated China's drive to develop domestic alternatives for everything from chips to software. Chinese firms, with state backing, made rapid progress. SMIC pushed older lithography tech to new limits, nearing sub-7 nimmer chips. China also invested heavily in its own lithography tools, aiming to break free from ASML. Tech giants like Huawei, Xiaomi, and BYD built closed-loop supply chains, reducing reliance on foreign tech. This growing independence shifted the balance of power. Western choke points became less effective. China's tech may not always match the West's, but it's increasingly good enough for its needs. The window for the West to use tech sanctions as leverage is closing fast. The 20,000 weights, Burdon de Dan, Iburdawan de Vai Fim. Five rare earth crisis marked a turning point in global power, sending shockwaves through governments and industries worldwide. Suddenly, the world realized just how fragile the backbone of modern technology had become. The tech race now centers on control over raw materials, processing, and manufacturing tools. Nations are scrambling to secure the elements that power everything from smartphones to electric vehicles and advanced weaponry. China's rare earth play showed that supply chain dominance is a new pillar of geopolitical influence. By controlling key links, China demonstrated its ability to shape the fate of entire industries and economies. Security and resilience now trump cost in supply chain decisions. Companies and countries are rethinking decades of globalization, prioritizing stability over efficiency. Governments and companies are mapping dependencies and reshoring critical production. New policies and investments aim to reduce exposure to single points of failure and hostile actors. The US and its allies still lead in advanced technology, but China's grip on essential materials creates a web of mutual vulnerability. Both sides are aware that interdependence can be weaponized. 
Any move to exploit a choke point risks retaliation and global disruption. The stakes are higher than ever with billions of lives and trillions of dollars hanging in the balance. The unipolar tech era is over. Power is now contested and diffuse. Multiple players are vying for influence, and alliances are shifting in real time. Control over mines, refineries, and factories is as crucial as intellectual property. The ability to extract, refine, and manufacture is now a core measure of national strength. The geopolitics of minerals is now at the heart of the struggle for global leadership, shaping the future of technology, security and prosperity for generations to come.